As teenagers living on the outskirts of Sydney in the early 80s, we lived in a world with the rhythms of a gently flowing river, as opposed to today's speeding rapids and plunging waterfalls. Our lives were consumed by footy, cricket, bike riding and skateboards to the sounds of ACDC, Cold Chisel and the Divinals. As the sun set on our reddened skies to the tune of a million crickets, we gathered around the idiot box to the familiar faces of Paul Hogan, <laughs> Benny Hill and Itar Butros. Social media and the internet itself were nothing but a distant dream in the minds of future tech wizards in another part of the world as a new communications protocol, TCP IP, was only just being born. For the kids of this era, there was only one place where we could truly escape from the ties of reality into the realms of fantasy and adventure, and for a brief moment in time experience, what to many of us was nothing short of pure magic. This place was the cinema. There were numerous cinemas within this central Sydney area at this time, though many were live stage theatres which also served as screen cinemas such as the State Theatre, the Regent, the Ascot, the Paramount and the Rapallo, to name a few, the latter two both demolished in 1983 to allow for the construction of the new Greater Union Centre, a four-screen complex following the trend of multi-screen cinemas led by the Hoyts Entertainment Centre in George Street, Sydney. There were numerous theatres and cinemas scattered throughout Western Sydney, the Roxy Theatre in Parramatta, in particular, holding a special place in our memories one of which includes opening day of The Empire Strikes Back, where the queue for tickets spanned the entire block, many standing nervously in line, hoping to reach the box office before the dreaded sold-out sign made its disappointing appearance. But there was a special sense of occasion to board the Red Rattler for the long trip to Central Station for a day at the movies in Sydney. The Hoyts Entertainment Centre, 505 to 523 George Street, Sydney, began construction in 1974 on the site where the Trocadero Dance Hall once stood, a large art deco, dance and concert hall that operated between 1936 and 1971. Often referred to as the Troc, it was once regarded as the most glamorous dance palace in Sydney. The Trocadero opened on Friday 3rd of April 1936. The ballroom weathered the storm of the Depression, World War II and the advent of television as a popular variety and big band venue. After entertaining Sydney for 35 years, the Trocadero closed on the 5th of February 1971 and was demolished for construction of the Hoyts Entertainment Centre. Originally, the Hoyts Entertainment Centre was to include the cinemas, offices and a hotel. The planned building would eventually be reduced and plans for the cinema centre altered due to the hotel concept not proceeding and the finding during excavation of a section from a colonial tank stream and the proximity of the railway underground branch line from Town Hall to Central. The building alteration included a subterranean access platform below the basement car park and the inclusion of suspension blocks to minimise the vibration of the railway. Hoyts opened on the 16th of December 1976 with the Pink Panther Strikes Again, Silent Movie, Eliza Fraser, The Eagle Has Landed, Barney and The Omen. The seven-screen multiplex was advertised as the biggest cinema complex in the world. Designed by Sir Roy Grounds and Partners, Romberg and Boyd. The exterior was huge and banal in the extreme, and the interior was ritzy and brash. However, the entrance lobby and foyer beyond, with its facilities of eatery and bar, had a spaciousness and feeling of occasion with its stimulating variety that was reminiscent to the interior of a casino. Indeed, looking back to its opening in December 1976, its generous spatial interior has never been repeated and, over the years, it has been destroyed by bottom-line driven management that has squeezed more auditoria within the same envelope only to create a rabbit warren of numbing soullessness. The facade of the Hoyts Entertainment Centre has been criticised and referred to as the worst of the style of architecture of the 1970s, the so-called functional style 
and considered most unsympathetic to the urban fabric. The complex comprised of seven auditoria, two on the ground level and a further five on the mezzanine level above. Once through the main entrance from George Street, one was confronted with the huge spacious foyer with a shimmering mural to the left, box office to the right and a grand staircase in centre leading to the mezzanine level. The ground floor also comprised of a cafe, eatery and bar, bookstore and a variety of pinball machines and video games opposite the cinema entrances. The Hoyts Entertainment Centre was renamed the Hoyts Centre on the 25th of September 1980 and then as George Street Cinemas on the 5th of December 2005. The longest season film in 70mm at the Hoyts Entertainment Centre was Star Wars, which opened 27th of October 1977 and ran for a 66-week season. The longest season film in 35mm was Crocodile Dundee, which premiered on the 23rd of April 1986 and ran for a 74-week season. In July of 2000, after the closure of Village Cinema City, Village and Hoyts entered into a joint venture of the Hoyts Centre with the original Cinema 3 and 7 Hoyts Entertainment Centre rebuilt into six auditoriums by dividing each auditoria in half and placing a third cinema in area of the stage. When the rebuild was completed, the Hoyts Centre became an 11-screen multiplex with Village Cinemas gaining control on five screens and Hoyts Corporation six screens. Despite the many criticisms of its original ultra-modern functional design to us as teenagers and film lovers of that era, it was an impressive and magical place which left us with long-lasting memories which many of us cherish to this day. When we stepped out into the bright foyer from the darkness of the cinema, we had only two things on our minds. The bookstore on the ground level and the McDonald's restaurant with its iconic subway entrance just outside. We spent countless hours at the Hoyt Centre bookstore, carefully selecting which magazine or novel to purchase on our very limited budget of pocket money, looking forward to the lengthy train ride home where we would devour the content within the pages. From the early 80s, there was also the customary visit to the video store just down the road from the cinema. I remember vividly the first time I held the VHS cassette of Star Wars in my hands in awe of the fact that I could literally own this vessel of magical escapism and enter this realm at will, in the comfort of my own home. It was the beginning of the home video era, which would dominate for almost a quarter of a century. Now, almost 45 years later, even after the rise of digital media and streaming sites, we are beginning to slowly see a returning appreciation for the cinema experience. Most encouraging is the fact that whenever there is a particularly popular film release, my own young children are quick to ask, can we go and see that at the movies? This confirms my own thoughts and those of many others that despite all the technology available to us for the consumption of entertainment, there is no real substitute for the cinematic experience. And since it has survived to this day, with the plethora of options competing for our attention, then it will most certainly be around for many years to come. If you enjoyed the content, please be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.